Okay, hi everybody. Hello world in the internet. Uh, this is Adrian, I'm Felix, and as Jana just said, yes, we would like to uh, present the, the current status of our work on this project. It's not, uh, it's not done yet. Um, and yes, it states here, cost-based content syndication with activity pub. And I know that's a lot of lingo, so hopefully we will shed some, uh, some light on, on things in this presentation. Uh, first, a little bit about the, the background. We've been uh, in, involved uh, a bit more recently um, in the whole domain of open educational resources. I don't know how many of you are familiar with that. Um, it's basically anything that can be used for teaching and learning published under an open license. Let's just put it that way. Um, so, yes, as I said, the, the only thing OER basically have in common is an open license, but other than that, it can be quite, uh, quite diverse. Uh, various resource types, um, software simulations, text-based, audio, video, interactive stuff like quizzes, um, and they can be published all over the web. So, th this can be uh, stuff on, on YouTube, uh, SlideShare, um, University homepages, wikis, repositories, anything, uh, anything um, out there. Um, and yeah, I think it's been like more than 10 years for the, what was the name of the declaration? So OER has been out there for quite a while, but only more recently that libraries have become involved. And I think the whole thing there is that sort of, they, okay, we have all of this stuff, but now we want to describe it and we meant to make it accessible. And there's these folks out there called librarians, they know how to do that. <clears throat> So that's some, somehow where libraries came into play. Um, and so yes, one possible uh, approach for the whole uh, thing we know quite well, um, and there's actually a couple of projects launching doing this, you know. Well, the first thing we do, um, we set up a repository. We just call it an OER repository, but um, yeah, let's put a repository out there. And then, in the same way as uh, in open access, we will just ask the people to deposit things in uh, this repository uh, or even republish content they already put somewhere else, then we might harvest all of the data from all of these various repositories that have been installed out there uh, and um, normalize the data, index them, and then we build a discovery service on top of that. Um, so that's, that's sort of the, the approach that came to, to mind first. But then we said, no, <laughs> not again. Um, why not? Um, what are drawbacks of such a, um, an approach? Um, for one thing, it's quite costly setting up and maintaining repo, repo repositories, especially when there are only few resources in, in them. And um, also, those um, this approach only covers those resources that are actually residing in a in a repository, and not all those OER that are elsewhere on the web. Um, and another problem is users have to know where is the search uh, service I have to use to find my uh, the, the OER I'm interested in. And yeah, last thing is it's uh, the approach is um, repository centric and so off the web and not part of the web. And that's quite uh, good uh, explained in the paper by Herbert van der Zombe. Hello. Um, uh, and and uh, what's the uh, name? Uh, Nelson, I don't know the <laughs> first name, sorry. Um, yeah, and it's ba it's ba it basically says uh, regarding OAI PMH uh, that, that interoperability with OAI PMH is framed in terms of the repository rather than in terms of the web and its primitives, and that's a problem with it. I won't expand on this. So. Exactly. So we were then thinking about, so what would a more web-centric uh, or resource-centric um, approach look like? Um, and at the same time, when we were approached with sort of regards to how to publish OER, uh, Adrian has also been involved in, in, a, in, a, uh, in, a, in a group for a while where, it, um, where they're sort of trying to define metadata standards for OER. And, and some of them is, is sort of like, how do we classify stuff? Um, and so uh, at that point, uh, we thought, well, uh, this was also the nice thing. In OER, we still, we still have quite little technical depth. We can just try 
something new. That was, that was quite, uh, quite nice. So uh, we thought, well, make it subject-oriented. Care less about where it's physically you know, stored. Care less about the source and care more about what it's actually about. Um, focus on the target audience. You know, because the, the type of discovery people want to do for OER, it's more like, okay, what school subject is this resource about? And what grade level? And we wanted to put that type of stuff at the center uh, of, of our approach. Uh, so yes, enter, enter SCOHUB, um, which stands for Simple Knowledge Organization Hub. Uh, and you probably all realize that the first the SCO, you know, add an S at the end, you have SCOS. Um, and we'll, we'll, we'll get to uh, the role of SCOS here in a minute. Uh, so it's a project by HPZ and Grab Thinking. It's funded by the state of North Rhine-Westphalia. We built a quick prototype in the beginning of this, was it this year? This year, and just entered uh, a second phase uh, where we changed some, uh, some things um, uh, we learned. And, and important, it's, uh, it's software and a service. I've heard of, like a different, different abbreviation for SaaS. It's not software as a service, it's software and a service. So, so you can actually download any of it and run it on your own, but if that's too much, you can go ahead and um, try out the service. Um, so, because we have presented this idea a couple of times, I did it this year at the ELAG in Berlin, and there were always a lot of arrows and boxes involved where stuff theoretically flows, and sometimes this was a little bit confusing. Um, so, today we would like to, to focus or show the actual workflow, what this enables less than the architecture. Um, and so, yes, we're taking the risk to uh, demo. Yeah. Um, okay, the first thing, you, uh, you, you need some, some uh, controlled vocabularies to start all this uh, subject-oriented oriented approach. And this is done by publishing a, a SCOS file uh, in Turtle serialization on GitHub. Then you set up a webhook in the GitHub settings and the vocab gets automatically published to uh, via Scohub with a nice uh, HTML representation and JSON-LD. Um, and the good thing, every um, concept is also an activity pub. That's, that's the protocol um, actor that you can follow. So what does, it, does this mean in practice? I will now skip to the... To an actual turtle file, this is the repo. We have some uh, controlled vocabularies or some classification in there. This is uh, the educational subject classification we created for another project. It's a very broad classification. Uh, you can see it's a SCOS concept scheme with all the concepts and broader and narrow rela relations, or you cannot see it because it's too small, but you know <laughs> what I'm talking about. <laughs> um, yeah, and the good thing is the, uh, you can. You can um, edit it here, you can maintain the vocabulary here, and you have all the, 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 the whole workflow you have with Git and GitHub, you have it uh, for, for maintaining your vocabulary, you can start working in a branch to test things, and, and you have pull requests for review and all the, all the stuff. Okay, so, and then uh, the additional thing for Scope, I set up this webhook, I think I have to... Uh, yeah, I already set it up, and now I have to. Got it right at the first go. Very good. Um, yeah, and you have to write down the payload URL, and it will send J. They will be sent in JSON, and you have to uh, uh, put in a, sec uh, a secret password there, so you can ask us if you want to try it out. Yeah, and then you then the the uh, with every change in the repository, the 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 uh, webhook will deliver um, content to Scohub, and you get the response from Scohub here. The build is triggered. This is the URL for the build. Oh, can click it here. So. And you see the build is complete, and it's all this logging uh, we don't care about at the moment. 
and then I click on this, and this is how it, the repo is published um, with Co-op. These are the vocabularies, um, the concept schemes in there that were on GitHub are now now here as HTML representation. Um, yeah, you see the hierarchy. I can expand it uh, to see the whole thing, collapse it, and I can search for a concept. Um, and I'm choosing this one. As you can see, we already um, use um, permanent uh, URIs for with from w3id.org for this vocab. For example, if I uh, the real like I said, so I put it in the browser. I come again to go up. Um, yeah, and the good thing, as I told you, this is a uh, um, activity pub actor. This means I can follow it with an activity pub client like Mastodon. Uh, you know, ha have you heard about Mastodon already? Who has heard about it? A few. Okay. Basically, it's a decentralized uh, social network with different hubs that uh, can communicate. It's it's a really very um, similar to Twitter, and but without the, all the uh, uh, ads, yeah, with all all the ads and the people randomly getting pulled off in, uh, with uh, without the Nazis, they stay on there. Yeah, but whatever. Um, so I can I have this Mastodon thing, and now I can I put in the URI of my concept, which is also an activity pub actor. Search for it. I will find it, and I can follow it. I can add it to my follow list and yeah i'm now following uh information and communication technologies and whenever somebody sends a message i will hopefully uh, get a toot that's called uh, that's the tweet in the mastodon in the fatty words <laughs> so uh where do we go from here exactly so now that adrian is waiting for updates where do these updates come from um basically they can come from anywhere. This is a this is an open uh, this this is, is an open environment. You could use curl or some automated processes or stuff like that to send to send notifications uh, there. But because that's uh, sort of more tangible, um, we have uh, created a little um, browser plugin that allows to do the following. I come along and say, "Wow, this is a very nice slide deck here. I want to share this." This is really nice. So I can install the plugin uh, and uh, I can bring up this this little this little editor. Um, just a little meta information here. The whole editor, by the way, it's it's you can configure it quite easily. Well, if you're techie, quite easily. It's based on uh, on, on JSON schema. Um, just because referring to it's it's just another way to basically put an application uh, profile there, right? So this it's not really hard coded. The the type of metadata you can enter here is not really uh, really hard coded. We provide a simple schema in there, but in theory you can you, you know you can make this much more complex uh, and and put basically anything you like uh, in there. So what does it do? Uh, it pulls out the URL, the title, the description so far, uh, and then it will allow you to um, assign um, uh, one of the concepts uh, from a classification system. So this is here, we have the, this, this um, educational subject classification configured right here so that we can, uh, that we can link to it. Um, and then I can go and say, well, let me publish this. And it tells me it has been published to information and communication technologies. Uh, and what does that mean? Yeah, let's see. Um, because I'm following this this topic, incidentally, and yeah, as you can see here, uh, I, I got a, a notification, a toot sent from Scohub to my uh, Mastodon interface, and now see, oh, there's a Scohub cost space card. That's really interesting. Let's take a look at, at this. And then I can uh, take a look at the slide deck. Um, yeah, and this is uh, clicking on the, th this is basically the, the, the payload sent from Scohub to to the subscribers. Um, it's it's a, um, a activity pub note, just to let you know. Yeah. So where are the slides again? I 
think we are here right now, aren't we? Uh, so anyways, that was basically uh, the demo. So I, I think, um, I, I hope the message sort of got along. It's the whole idea of people or obviously it can also be any, any other machines out there following a topic or following something that is described in a controlled vocabulary. So, you, you, for example, you could have, uh, you could, you could follow everything for, I don't know, first grade mathematics if you're looking for OER and that. So the whole idea really of, you know, following as in technically following, uh, following in, in, in Twitter and stuff like that. But also, as you say, I'm, I, I like to be kept up to date. I want to follow this topic. And this is, uh, this is the, the main idea behind it. Um, yeah, we just like to state it's it's open as in fully based on open standards, linked data notifications, and um, uh, and activity pub. Um, activity pub is basically a protocol that is, for example, used by uh, by by Mastodon. Um, I won't get into too many details. It was a bit of a pain to implement at times because uh, um, yeah, the documentation was so so. Um, it's it's decentralized. You can uh, you can basically you could set up your own hub. As I said, it's it's a software and a service. There's no, you know, not everything has to go through this little domain that we got there, scohub.io. That's just one one possible uh, way to access this stuff. Um, you can you can you can access any parts of the system. For example, you could just. Uh, implement a subscriber to to follow stuff and then index metadata that comes that's published on uh, on on Scohub, um, and yeah, and it's quite modular. You know, you could maybe even reuse certain components. Uh, you know, if you just say, oh, well, th this workflow to edit vocabularies on GitHub and then publish a nice linked data version of it is enough, and I don't need any of the fo fancy following stuff, go ahead and do so. Um, also, the editor is standalone, and the idea there was basically, other than in a repository where the description, again, the metadata, the description of the object is made at the same location where it's stored, right? A repository is sort of a monolith to, to a certain way. And this little editor, maybe it's useful, you can just use it you know, to create to create structured metadata about any web resource, about anything, as a matter of fact, and um, it's sort of a pretty generic infrastructure. Um, we know of, uh, you know, you could you could maybe use it to communicate, you know, intermingle it with something like the GND, and then follow authors in an authority file to be updated when there's new publications by them. Um, or even maybe communicate changes in authority data itself. This is an approach um, that also this year, uh, Lucas Costa and uh, Violetta Illig, they published an article about an uh, info-sharing pipeline. So I think the, the, the generic idea here is to get more to this push approach. There's a, there's a continuous stream of data that you can hook into. Uh, other than the static approach to, uh, to, to, you know, publish and then crawl all the time. Yeah, regarding the modules, for example, I'm in this OER recommendation for uh, 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 metadata recommendations where we want to develop something and uh, we are planning to use this to develop develop recommendation. I think it's really nice to write a schema for a, for an application profile and then be be... Uh, able to try it out with an editor directly, and then uh, so it's, it's you get really good feedback, and then you can sh uh, adjust the the um, the schema, and then try it out again. And the same with a with a controlled vocabulary classification. You you write you have need someone who knows how to write a turtle file as an as the editor, but he can add the things uh, people are discussing, and then you can directly take a look at the HTML version. And I think it's really comfortable to. Uh, to use it for developing um, recommendations, for example. Yeah, and and this is really uh, yeah, what's really technical rather what we are talking about. And this is and and we use the education subject classification that is really not suited for this. I think uh, if you want to use it, uh, really use it in in practice. So you the social requirements are also there. So you need to agree on standards. You need to get people together. And uh, discuss what what is the domain model we want to to have for our domain, and uh, what schemas, what metadata do we actually want? You, you all know about this, um, and and that's the role of librarians, where we can f help 
domain experts uh, in in developing this, and, and we, prov we, we think we provide some good tools for do so uh, to do so. And then, if you, as soon as you have those recommendations, you need people to actually implement them and use them, and this is uh, the important social requirement. Exactly. So uh, yes, here's a couple of links if you want to try it out, get involved, give us some feedback, and. Uh, um, Yes, as the final, our, our final question to you would be, does this make sense? Um, could you, you know, sort of imagine to, to, uh, to actually apply some of these things? Uh, do you see any use cases? Uh, do you say our use cases are nonsensical? So we're happy for any feedback. Thanks. Thank you so much, you two, and uh, especially for taking up the risk of the live demo, which made it, made it very um, good to experience right away. So, um, are there comments, uh, thoughts, questions? Please go ahead. Hello. Okay. Just, uh, uh, is there like a front end page, sort of like in the plans? Because your, if I understand correctly, it's kind of it works in a in a in a way like a bit similar, like the old um, link sharing platforms, like Delicious and Scuttle and that sort of stuff. In a way that it's like you're sharing links, but this is richer. I understand like you have all this metadata added, but I was wondering if like having a front, sort of like a front end, or, or you can build upon maybe like if through an API or something, you can build like a front end where you can like see the themes and you know, like make some sort of a access interface for the resources itself uh, instead of following through social, like a social media like kind of stuff. Um, when I understand you correctly, that's something we are planning to do. Now we only have, we, we showed this Mastodon, Mastodon as client, but the next client we want to build is some index who, who, who subscribes to subjects and indexes them, and then you could easily use this to show, I don't know whether you mean that, to show the classification along with the resources that have been added recently and how and the number of them, and perhaps we, we didn't know that you, have, you also have the possibility to like and, and re, uh, to boost, uh, like we treat those things. You could add the, this information because it's interesting to know how many people interacted with the resource. You could uh, add, uh, yeah. Something like th this, you could easily do, and, and we want to start with a, with an index that is. Uh, I'm subscribing to the subject. Thank you. We would have time for another short question, Niklas. All right. Uh, uh, I just a comment really I think this is really inspiring and I sort of see it as the potential end of the seemingly perpetual import export routine that we have dug ourselves into uh, and I, and I think that uh, it would be interesting to see if sort of Wikidata itself could start to have activity hubs for all their resources and, and see what happens if that would happen that would engage a lot of talks and experiments, I think. Do you agree? Uh, yes, definitely. And, uh, and this is one of the things where this is, as we said, it's modular. It wouldn't actually be so hard for to add a link for every single Wikidata item to, you know, to, to point to this is the hub where communicate about it. It's, it's actually quite decoupled and you can reuse the single component. So you could actually say Wikidata is my, you know, sort of authority file hub or whatever. And then it could link there and, and and start using it basically just by linking there. So yeah, I think that makes sense. Well, thanks again, you two.